Hello again everybody, it's TJ, the Stereo Bargain File, and I am very, very pumped up today to finally bring you all my overview of the i5 Micro iTube Tube Class A Tube Pre-Amplifier Buffer. And uh, first and foremost, I want to give a huge thank you to i5 Audio for sending uh, me their i5 iTube Tube into the channel so I could give it an overview. I also want to give a special thank you out at Karina. Uh, Karina is the person at i5 that helps the channel out and getting things in for an overview or a review. So let's go ahead and let's get started with all the accessories that the i5 iTube 2 comes with. So first here, you all go, you're going to get a set, you know, one set of uh, analog RCA cables with the iTube tube. And then you're going to get this awesome, awesome power supply. This is actually iFi's um, i power supply. I actually have one of these myself that I bought uh, for my DAC that is 5 volts. These normally run about 50 bucks, you all. And iFi has these in, um, I think they have them in 5 volt, 9 volt, 12 volt. And this one is actually a 15 volt. And then they will send you a 90 degree angle that you can plug in to the end of it. They're both the same on the ends. But if you need that, you know, that 90 degree, well, they hook you up with that. Also, iFi gives you a little tool for your dip switches on the bottom that, will, that I will show you just here in a minute. But as I was saying about iFi's iPower supply... Here's the one I actually bought. That's the five volt, the five volt one, the one I actually bought for my DAC. Awesome, awesome power supply. Them including that with this purchase, that is just great. And of course, you'll get your little manuals, and it'll tell you all the different settings and what they, uh, what they do. But I'm gonna go over that with you all. Okay, so that's all the accessories that you get with the iTube tube, and now. I want to talk about its outside build quality. And like always, iFi always has that really good cast aluminum casing. Very, very strong casing. And uh, now, since I'm not going to pop the hood on it, I want to explain to you all the internals of the iTube tube. As you can see, it's number two. Uh, compared to the first generation iFi tube SE, the iTube iTube tube is a complete revamp. That's right. Everything inside is completely different except for the actual tube or valve that's inside, which is the Genuo Electric 57, 5670. I'm sorry, 5670 built inside. That is the only thing that is the same about them. So I'm going to go ahead and go over what's built inside. First off, uh, you get the Elna Silmic capacitors you also get japanese made cog type capacitors and japanese panasonic ecpu film capacitors designed to have you know that very low distortion rating inside and also inside you do have an analog volume or power switch okay now so now that i got that over with telling you all what was everything built inside one thing i want to say about this tube is it comes from a legendary tube. Uh, it was built on that uh, same principle as the tube by Western Electric. Western Electric back in 1946, you all, came out with a tube that was called the 6922 tube. And it was like a, a, a what they call like a trio uh, tube, um, a dual trio tube. And many other companies, since it had, you know, that really good smooth orga organic sound to it many other companies you know started making them just like western electric well the one that comes with the i5 i2 tube is the ge uh 5670 i just really want to emphasize on that tube built inside to you all so you all know that it, it's built from you know a superior well it's superior to you know the western electric 6922 it's just it's just very legendary you all i just really had to get that out there to you all so now 
I want to let's go ahead and talk about the feet all the features on the outside of the class A tube preamplifier buffer okay here on the bottom you will see over here that we have dip switches how you know you can use this for two different things you can use it as a tube single ended preamplifier or you can use it just as a buffer and here's your little tool if you want to switch you know back and forth through them dip switches but what is really really awesome that iFi Audio did. I tell you, their engineers are really on it, you all. Well, they have two different modes for the buffer and two different modes for the preamplifier. And what this does, you can either set it on 0 dB or 9 dB. And that is a very awesome feature to have because this is going to let you um, do the impedance matching of your amplifier. You know, I've showed you all on other other videos of mine that I have vintage amplifiers, I have newer amplifiers, and you know, this allows me to really, because not every amplifier has that same impedance. So, you know, sometimes I may use 0 dB, sometimes I may use 9 dB. Now, on most of my newer equipment, I didn't have to add the 9 dB, but on my older vintage amplifiers, like my Onkyo Integra M504, Yes, I added the 9 dB both when I was using it as a buffer and a single-ended tube preamplifier. But yes, this is an awesome, awesome feature, iFi. Great job. Okay, as you can see here on the front, we have uh, three different toggle switches, and we have an all-analog off-and-on switch, and for the volume knob. Now, I'm going to explain to you all the best I can what all these features do. Down here on the end, we have our 3D holographics, and uh, this helps expand the sound stage. We have three different modes. So if I go all the way down here to the bottom, to the plus mode, this uh, mode right here is uh, the default setting and keeps the original width of the sound stage. To me, it just added just a tiny bit to the width. We go to the middle now, here in the middle, as you'll see, that is the minus. This mode is just switched out of the signal path completely. And then, when we go all the way up, this adds, um, this is your 30 degrees plus. And this mode adds 30 degrees of red wrist, the narrow placement of speakers. This really, when you turn it up, it really widens your sound stage big time if your speakers are having a hard time you know um sound stage doesn't sound very wide well uh you use this switch it will but if you don't need it then you know you got other settings now let's go to the bass okay one of my favorite features the bass the middle toggle switch when you have it all the way down that is just the default setting it doesn't add anything you turn it up one where it says at 20 hertz it adds 12 dB. What this actually does, if your speakers uh, don't have a lot of bass at 80 hertz and under, this will really boost um, that bass signal. And what is so surprisingly of uh, using these toggle switches at different settings is uh, the noise floor stayed so low. I was very, very impressed with that. But then you turn it up one more switch where it says um, add 6 dB at 20 hertz. Now this is going to be for speakers that are having a hard time, you know, having good bass, you know, down below 40 hertz. So now let's get to my favorite. Let's put this one back at the bottom. Let's get to my favorite, the one on the end. This one here, basically what this does, IFI calls it, you know, uh, changing their topology of their tube basically changing the sound signature and I absolutely love this feature it is my favorite overall with all the different you know settings that you have and uh, when you have it turned all the way down to the bottom uh, to push pull it does have that sound like a uh, um, push pull setting would have um, it just sounds like a push pull amplifier then we go up here in the middle Okay, up here in the middle, you have um, uh, with that minus sign, that is basically uh, produces a sound that's parallel to a classic 
tube based studio equipment kind of sound then we go up to the top when you go up here to the top position when you go to the top position uh, the set position has a sound signature of a single ended trio powered amplifier and to be honest with you all um, I don't know if I like the triode better or the push pull better I do like them both better than I do the the classic scent the classic studio sound but yes sometimes I like the triode a lot better than I do the uh, push pull and then sometimes I like the push pull setting this is very awesome that you can get in there and change that sound signature then over here on the front this is your all analog um, volume knob if you're using it as a preamp and you're off and on switch if you're using it for a button but yes you all this has been just like a hidden little gem you know if you have some kind of weakness in your system or you're somebody like me that chases after a different sound you know uh, this buffer pre to preamplifier it can do that and here is the back of the unit here you'll see you just have your ins and out here you go you see you just have your RCA, RCA input and RCA output very very simple design and here on the top you do have a, a you can see through the little hole they cut through where the eye is and you can look down in there and you can actually see a little bit of the tube now down here this is your indicator light because this being a you know a product that has a tube in it the tubes do need to warm up when you first turn it on this will be red when it's ready to play it will go to a yellow now iFi audio recommends that you wait at least you know 20 minutes to uh, let it fully warm up and I will say I totally agree with them but uh, it's about seven inches long one inch tall I did and it does put out you know a good little bit of heat it don't get red hot or nothing like that but it does um, put out some heat and um, I did use the little you know um, vibration pads on the bottom but I went and got a one by four you can see right here I went and got a one by four and I just cut it down you know about eight inches give room for the RCA jacks and the switches <clears throat> I put my own little feet on it some little absorption pads some felt on this side very very easy to do that way I have you know something for it to set up on and as you can see the reason why I use them feet is because you can see through it so we're getting air in between it but very easy just to cut a one by four add some you know speaker feet to it and I just added the extra little um, absorption pads on the bottom but yeah pretty cool huh pretty cool stuff and yes over here on the side that's where you plug in your 15 volt iFi i power supply awesome little power supply again so I'm gonna set there up, up there just like that and I did test this out on many many amplifiers and many speakers and personally my own subjective opinion I absolutely absolutely love it and I highly recommend it to somebody out there you know that's like me that likes to go out there and chase after you know different sounds um, I would highly recommend it to somebody like that because you know as John Darko says another stereo reviewer on YouTube he's like you know us people that go out and chase after sound you know by definition yes we're colored and uh yes that is exactly what the i tube tube can do it can add color you know to match up to your colorful taste it can um add some good bass in where your speakers are really needed at if your speakers don't then you know you can just use the default setting and again you can add that nice smooth tube warm flavor you know using it as a buffer in your system or using it as a single ended you know one analog input tube preamplifier but yes i highly recommend it until next time this is tj stereo bargain file i'm sorry y'all i had to come back because there was a couple things that i forgot to mention in here you know um the the i tube tube really doesn't have i really can't explain to you uh it's sound character you know like bass and treble and mid-range because you have different a lot of different 
uh, options, you know, to color in your sound, you know. Um, but I will tell you, it is a great product, the mid-range. I will tell you, the mid-range vocals and, you know, even guitar strings and everything just had that, that good warmth to it. You do get a good, good taste of that tube flavor. And uh, to me, overall, that mid-range, it just it blossomed like a flower, you all. I mean, I absolutely love the iTube tube. The only caveat that I have at all with the iTube tube is uh, I got it on a loan lease agreement, and I got to send it back. And I really don't want to send it back because it sounds awesome. But anyways, I just wanted to put that out there. Again, the iFi Micro iTube tube in the U.S., it uh, sells for $399 US dollars, and to me, it is worth that. And until next time, this is TJ, Stereo Bargain Foul.